without more ado, Anna Beecher. For a bit, you slipped into the single syllable explosion of calling him Dad. It thumped into conversations. We should go and see my dad. The airbag of the A inflating between tooth bearing plosives. We had just met when he came back into your orbit. And you spent a season sampling new intimacies, feeling for a fit with both of us. You began to hold my hand. And maybe it wasn't fate that had made you a man who loved his father's favorite bands, but it was a magic trick to unpick the past with. For a dry run at rekindling, he took you skiing. And then we both went over to see him in a place he called Stroke City. You taking the wheel of his taxi so he could roll cigarettes, tobacco clinging to his thin legs and the radio singing. Battles that had barely died down had left the town illustrated and suspended between names, he explained. Your accent London to his dairy when it briefly punctuated his hurry to fill the space left vacant by years of missing conversations. And in the pub between Virgin Mary shops, David Hay beat the beast from the east and you were introduced. My son. The phrase as new as if you were new born. He tugged you from your well-worn name into the similar syllables of the one you once went by, which you shrugged from your shoulders and said didn't feel right. And at that some point that night, he began to regain the distancing hiss of his first name, the fricative forced through tight lips. Glasses piling up around you like yesterday's. The two of you drank as if there was no tomorrow. I totally abandoned my order of poems as well. So if I launch into a poem and it sounds a bit familiar, do let me know. <laughs> it was much easier the first time I came to Dodo Modern Poets it was much easier to choose my poems because I met Patrick and he said, do you want to do 20 minutes? And I, that was literally <laughs> the amount of poetry I'd written in my life. So that was quite a few years ago now. Um, and but that just makes me want to thank you so much, Patrick, for really encouraging poets. And <laughs> I now have more than five poems. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll do another rhymy one, then we can do some super sad ones. <laughs> yeah. Here come the words that you don't mean. Fist in your throat when their lips meet. He also their hips are the same height and his hand slips to the small white stripe of flesh between her top and her jeans. And here come the words that you don't mean. You know her a bit, so you think you can say, oh, is this what you do when your boyfriend's away? Nothing to do with you, but it bruises you. Blue like the wine in your veins, red rust streaks between each of your teeth like the cuts between your body and your brain. And here come the words that you don't mean. Words like shame. She tied a stone to this, this urge to kiss and watched from the cliffs as it sunk. But tonight the sea's flooded in vodka and coke and everything floats when you're drunk. They face each other, knees brace each other, a circuit seeking to seal, and words you don't mean flood out in a stream. How would her poor partner feel? But I could reveal how your mouth tastes when it's not full of hate, 
how the lace veins in our lips met. Your eyes filled with each moment up till that one, and I watched you blink and forget. I watched you, my made-up wolf pop, a whole moon of hunger inside you, two bottles of wine and some sadness and a cubicle door to hide you, your glass smashed and your neck bent, and for once in your life you did something you meant. Thank you. spend all the time talking about how great Dodo Modern Poets is, but one thing that is nice here is that you can do the kind of poems you might do at a poetry slam, and then you can do sort of page poems, really, and so I'm going to embrace that. Um, this poem is called After the Attempt, and it's, it's about um, a friend of mine that I lived with for a while. After the attempt. After the attempt, I went to work. Shoelace round my throat, swinging my key fob. After the attempt, you sent me a message that did not mention the attempt. Then a message that did. After the message, I folded a striped tablecloth double and laid it out, smoothing the wrinkles with the ridge of my palm. Then I called and asked if in this moment you were safe. After the call, I took plastic cups from their plastic sheath, climbed onto a chair and hung bright bunting from the ceiling. After the call, I thought about the difference between skin and fabric, between lovers, brothers and friends, between me when I had a little more excess and me this afternoon. After the attempt, I thought about the heavy chest in our living room, how I had taken out each shoe, swept away the mud dust and filled it with medicine and why. Um, yeah. While I'm doing a page poems, I'll do this one. I once asked a quite a, a famous performance poet, who should not be named, in a workshop, how do I segue in an inner set between like a fun, rhymy poem and a very serious Sestina? And he said, never do that. <laughs> go for it, go for it. Hey. <laughs> Bird song. I wept your cracked, fallow tongue. It is the end of the age of miracles. Gather up your near-dead hand and sing softly into the silence. Jaundiced tumours, yellow as sunlight, yellow as the little bird. Next door, the little bird is singing, calling, vibrating its tongue. <coughs> A feather-wrapped heartbeat, so light. Lightness itself, a kind of miracle ready when you die to break the silence, poised, feet curled around the chaplain's hand. We say, I think he squeezed my hand in turn, holding it as gently as a bird at any hint of waking, breaking silence. We rush to you with heavy tongues, longing now for smaller miracles, jostling for the patch of light that falls across your bed. Wintry lights from the garden that graces your hand, resting on the white sheet, where the miracle of those familial fingers nibbled by the bird. A certain curve of lip, ability to curl tongues, 
are comforting accidents to fill the silence. We shared an accent before the silence. I glance at you on the balcony, lighting a cigar, laughter dancing off your tongue, the Christmas before sickness, with the same hands that now rest on the bedsheet as lightly as birds about to take flight. Flicking through miracles, photographs of the lifetime before miracles were needed, steady unnoticed growth of silence, and the shot of you, conscious, stroking the bird just days before, cage catching the light, the bird gently catching your hand, weak perfect smile over soft hydrated tongue, discarded miracles catch light, cold spreads silent into slim hands, violent beauty of bird song, love, cracked tongue. fingernails, trying to pick them up from hands that gathered eggs to wrap instead around her small palms, smile floating shyly above the handshake. Later hands shaking and the kiss, she wipes a crumb from his lips, fingers tracing thighs beneath her starched skirt and the smell of her hands on him like the sheets they folded, fresh. She ran a finger from his forehead to his nose, gently removed a fly from his eyeball, and they slid rings down the barrels of each other's fingers, him still with mud along the creases. Lines deepening, as palms are moulded around the soft backs of babies' heads. Once, as five fingers folded around his one, he glimpsed his own father's hands disappearing into gloves. The slap, which happened once and stopped time. When the children were in bed, remembered in red in the fingers bitten back, running through the hair, no longer tracing each other in wonder. Wrinkled hands ceased to interlace, wrapping themselves instead around coffee cups for warmth. Wool spooling around her thin fingers, illuminated and old under the lamp, skin shrinking from the bones on the backs of her hands. By the time his fingers found hers again, there was a cannula at the elbow crease, and her pulse was frantic, fragile as those first fumblings. In the absence of her voice, her hand replied, like the baby taking his finger, a little scrap of life squeezing away doubt. And now, as he reaches into the urn to take her out in handfuls, dust settles in the space between the skin and the worn band of the ring. It's been an absolute joy and treat to have Anna feature back this over again. So, uh,